Good evening. Welcome to the big fight. We've had a change of heart on this program tonight. We were meant to discuss the Chidambaram case, but the slew of measures which have been announced by the Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman uh, at about 6 p.m. onwards tonight uh, makes us take pause and reflect on these announcements at a time when the economy has been really in the doldrums. Has enough been said uh, thus far in this rather expansive press conference with a series of announcements to give us an indicator of what we hope would be a somewhat brighter economic future. What we do know is that there will be more announcements. So the goal of this program is to bring in leading economists from across the country and then try and analyze point by point by point what she said as the finance minister and where that takes us. Now, as I mentioned, all of this comes at a time when the economy is distinctively sluggish. There are huge concerns of unemployment to many segments, including the auto sector. That's just one sector. The finance minister has announced several reform measures meant to help turn around the economy. Now, the announcements were made as part of what the minister said would be many such economy uh, announcements coming up. But as far as today is concerned, her proposals were in six areas. Continuing to push decriminalization and the reduction in harassment. Number two, encouraging enterprise and investment. Banking and credit is central to most economic activity and therefore that's an area that they're looking at very closely. Micro, small and medium enterprises and non-banking financial institutions, a focus of that. Capital flows and market and financial markets and absolutely critically, the automotive sector. Let's listen in to what she said. Relief from enhanced surcharge on long-term and short-term capital gains. In order to encourage investment in the capital market, it has been decided to withdraw the enhanced surcharge levied by the Finance No. 2 Act of 2019, the recent budget time, on long- and short-term capital gains to mitigate genuine difficulties of startups and their investors. It has been decided that Section 56.2b of the Income Tax Act shall not be applicable, shall not be applicable to a startup registered with DPIIT. Up front, we are releasing the 70,000 crores and additional lending and liquidity to the tune of 5 lakh crores can be made available by providing this upfront capital for the PSPs. CSR violations, about which all of us have been hearing, not to be treated as criminal offense and would instead be a civil liability. So BS4 vehicles, which are purchased up to 2020 March, will all remain operational for their entire period of registration. All right, so that's just a, a small look at some of the announcements uh, which have been made. I'm going to introduce our panel and then we're going to go through some of the specific points uh, that she has uh, uh, brought up as Ms. Nirmala Sitaraman. Uh, joining us on the program, Nasser Salim, the managing partner of Flexi Capital, um, also joined by Gurcharan Das, the former CEO of Procter & Gamble, Madan Sabnavis, Chief Economist at Care Ratings, Ashok Desai, former Chief Advisor in the Finance Ministry, Tehseen Punawala with me in the studio, uh, and Rajat Sethi, the political analyst. We'll also be joined by uh, the economist and former Chief Economist of the SBI, uh, Dr. Brinda Jagiddar. I'd like to thank all of you very much for joining us. Um, Mr. Desai, let me come to you first. Before we look at some of these specific points, um, the context in which Mrs. Sitaraman began her big series of announcements today had to do with the global scenario. She said, look, a lot has been said about India, where we stand right now. But if you look at advanced economies, if you look at emerging market and developing economies, if you look at the world altogether and you look at India, then our growth rate of GDP, while it may have come down, is still substantial. So therefore, the criticism has to be placed in this context. So from a macro standpoint, before we get into specifics, do you believe there is merit in this argument? I myself think that we should look at our potential growth rate 
Yes, go ahead, sir. Go ahead. We can hear you. Well, um, we should really be looking at our potential growth rate, which has been, for the last 15 years, around 8%. And the actual growth rate has come down to 5, 5.5. Five so we are doing really badly, and that is something the finance minister is simply not prepared to admit. Okay, I just want to go through some of the specific points that she's referred to. Uh, let's just bring up this first graphic of ours, her big push to the economy and, and some of the key points over here. Firstly, the super rich tax hike for investors has been rolled back. A lot of people would say that this was, in a sense, uh, all about a series of very major rollbacks in as much as there was something very new and different which was announced. So the super rich tax hike for investors rolled back. The angel tax provisions for startups removed, I think that would certainly be uh, welcome. There was a lot of criticism uh, of that move. Uh, corporate social responsibility, CSR violations, no longer a criminal offense to be treated as a civil matter. The issue of uh, income tax orders and summons through the central system, that's being looked at very, very closely. All IT notices have to be cleared within three months of a reply. So. Uh, IT returns which are languishing, causing uh, problems or trouble uh, in terms of the delay in a response, that has to be sorted out in a finite period of time. From um, an economic standpoint, to encourage growth and upfront release of 70,000 crore rupees of funds for government banks, additional lending of 5 lakh crores to public sector banks, banks agree to pass on the rate cut benefits to consumers, that's the expectation. Will that facilitate growth quickly? The online tracking of loan applications so that this takes place in a time-bound manner. This is all being encouraged. All pending GST refunds uh, in a 30-day period for MSMEs. All future GST refunds in 60 days for MSMEs. An additional series of funds worth 20,000 crore rupees uh, to housing finance firms at a time when the housing sector has been utterly in the doldrums for all sorts of reasons. And for the auto sector, uh, vehicles registered uh, with the emission standard of Bharat Stage 4, which were purchased till March 2020, will remain operational till uh, their registration period is valid. This is important because there was a sense that a lot of these cars would be taken off the roads so or vehicles produced to this level of emission standard uh, could no longer be sold. That's a clarification. It's been welcomed by the auto industry. And a ban on the purchase of new government vehicles has been lifted to boost the auto sector. The government is a huge purchaser of cars, so they're going to purchase more. It's going to start back. Uh, it's going to start sooner than later. But let me just go across to Madan Subnavis. Mr. Subnavis, uh, Mrs. Sitaraman has promised many more such, or, or a few more such press conferences but in terms of what she's proposed over here, uh, do you believe that overall, overall, this is something which can help the economy in a finite period of time? Mr. Sabnavis. Yeah, actually, when we're talking in terms of addressing the issue of slowdown of the Indian economy, I think we need to distinguish between a stimulus and a case of alleviation of various pain points which are there in the economy. And I think the announcements which the finance minister has made today addresses quite a few pain points which are there, therefore should be welcome because they will definitely make life easier, both in terms of business and as well as individuals. But if you're really talking in terms of a stimulus, in terms of the government actually going beyond something which we already know, I think that's something which has not come out out here and will probably be taken up in the next two sets of measurements. So we should be a bit guarded, uh, while definitely what the, everything that the finance minister announced will definitely be useful for the concerned sectors, especially for the FPIs, as well as for the automotive industry, stock markets, and so on and so forth. We have not really gone beyond anything new. It's a case of rollback of certain policies, clarifications, making sure that uh, the pain is generally eased for a number of economic players. That's the way I look at it. Very positive, but it's definitely not a stimulus, something which we are also expecting and we need to see if it happens in the next two sets of announcements. Fair enough. Alleviation versus stimulus. Uh, Mr. Sabnov is arguing that it's it's the latter. It's not really stimulus to the extent that it's required. Uh, Mr. Das, to you, what is the biggest single step over here which can, which can say, revive growth? Uh, if, if we look at just growth itself, what do you believe is the way forward in terms of what's been announced? Well, 
yeah the 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 issue really was demand yes and that's the heart of the matter investors are not investing because the demand is not there and so quite rightly the major question mark was a stimulus package and frankly i'm very wary of stimulus packages i do think we're doing the right thing by bringing down interest rates so the monetary response is correct and frankly i also believe the frbm is a hard fought victory and fiscal discipline is a hard fought victory and we should not succumb to short term uh, panic uh, and 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 frankly the last time we gave us fiscal stimulus in 2009 it 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 had some very toxic results towards the end it's very hard to control a stimulus very hard to end it and 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 and, and it resulted in a lot of difficulty in upa2 okay so i would just say that the major thing that we have done in this mm -hmm. what mrs sita raman has announced is that 70000 crores yes. which would have been spent over the year is being put up front and that is a stimulus because that will give liquidity of 5 lakh crores to the system and 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 that will will help plus the the housing 20000 crores for housing these are all measures that will ha help demand but really uh, if my disappointment yep I, i thought her performance was very good by the way i mean for a government that's known that's got a reputation for not listening here was an example of listening right no i think that's an important point and although i i and mr das one moment i so you know just in terms of listening I, one I, of i just yeah mr das quickly your yeah, point i just sir. want to yeah. make one important yes. point yes sir we yeah, a very important point that my disappointment was the fact that you already had announced 1 lakh crore in the budget for infrastructure yes the best form of stimulus is infrastructure spending and that's where a key point. there's a credibility gap with people like me is that we don't know where the money is coming from that 1 lakh crore has not been budgeted we don't know it should have be ideally should divided by 5 right. we should have had a budget of 20 20 lakh crores in this okay budget. mr das i want to bring in and some of my other panelists for the press conference sure one one second sir you know just in terms of okay. of what you were talking about about a government listening anand mahindra has tweeted he said um let's see where does he start here he said i've said before a willingness to relook at policies is a display of strength not weakness today's press conference by nirmala sitaraman will i hope mark the start of a new interactive and independent relationship between government and business uh holding a press conference and announcing a slew of measures instead of a trickle of tweaks was smart communication it garnered global attention and signaled the government's recognition of the gravity of the situation and an intent to reignite sentiment and growth uh, so a couple of uh, reactions over there from from anand mahindra uh, rajat uh, would you agree to a certain extent with what mr uh, with with what mr das is saying that the big announcement many would say in the uh, in the uh, independence day speech of the prime minister was 100000 crores for infrastructure spending uh, would you have perhaps wanted to see something uh, more substantive in terms of how that was going to work itself onto the ground from mrs sitaraman today um i uh, i agree with uh, gulsharan ji to the limit that yes we need to have uh, i mean a visible plan uh, laid out in front of us as to how the 100 lakh crore rupees is being financed and is being spent but is this press conference the right opportunity or the timing for it maybe not i mean she was here to address certain urgent issues she also pointed out that there is a a, a task force which has been instituted uh she can't be too hairbrained about like just coming out in a press conference and detailing as to where she's going to finance 
finance this and where is she going to spend. That's perhaps not the right way. They need to have, and I'm uh, pretty sure that Nirmalaji is looking at a larger, uh, you know, collaborative efforts, talking to different ministries, trying to hash out what the priorities are, and then perhaps reach out to external funding agencies like New Development Bank, etc., mm -hmm. to look at uh, innovative ways of financing. It could be PPP, exploring, looking at disinvestment, generating funds from there, and, and basically laying out the whole uh, roadmap. Again, as she has said, that there is a task force. There is no reason for us not to believe her. Yeah. Uh, we should and give she them said there will be more announcements. Uh, she said that they will come out with a report in a month or so. Yeah, in a month or so, she will come out and roll out the plans uh, with regards to infrastructure spend. And I am pretty confident that this uh, impetus which will be given to the infrastructure would yield. And she did say uh, that there would be a panel which would be set up. So, Mr. Das, that, that's an important point. In fact, I, I, I missed that point. I'm, I'm being told by my producer that she did say a panel is being set up. Uh, and, you know, in a finite period of time. Yeah, Mr. Das, go ahead. Yes. Yeah, I think the issue, mine is a bigger issue. Sure, sure. That there's a, there's a reasonable lack of trust in the numbers. Right. Where, where does that money come from? Right. I, and, and hopefully we'll get some sort of clarity and on where that. where does the money... Okay. Uh, That's right. Yeah. So uh, maybe see, her today, next press conference right. will so, be so an one opportunity sec, I just, I, I just want to bring us. in my multitude of voices on this program. There's seen at a point, there's seen uh, Rahul Gandhi today was critical of the state of the economy. Then you've got this press conference. It certainly signals intent. It certainly uh, signals a willingness to listen. It's been only, a, a, what, a hundred odd days or so. Uh, is this not a government which is trying to make a difference to a situation which is also affected by the global scenario to, us, to, to some extent? May I call this press conference the debudgeting of Ms. Nirmala Sitaraman's budget? Everything she announced in the budget, which supporters of the government defended, she debudgeted it, and the supporters of the government are, She's rolled are defending. She's rolled back stuff, right? That's so it's debudgeting of the budget. A now couple of points, not everything. Now let's understand. Now let's. Uh, well, they, they they defended the super rich tax. They defended the angel tax. Now it's been rolled back. So when we were telling them, well, they, they weren't willing they to listen. Now, now may I make just a couple of points? In yes, but 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 then they. And they, now they fixed it. Now they fixed it, but they, we were telling them to withdraw it. The that super rich tax. Yes. Yes. Now now even long term capital gains. A lot of things to be spoken. But let's come to the core point. The core issue in India today is consumer. Consumers are not buying, investors are not investing. Why? What has this so-called press conference done to boost investor confidence? Mm -hmm. Your investor confidence broke, started breaking down precisely with press conferences like this when you had the ill-advised demonetization and every day the rules were changed. Budget, again rules have changed or there's been a rollback. Now, what did demonetization do? 94% of your workforce, 94% if it's an exaggeration, but definitely more than 90% of your workforce is in the unorganized sector. How have you addressed that? Because that will ultimately lead to consumption growing up. You have not addressed that. Yes, the automobile industry is very important. It's 7% of the GDP, of course. But what about the 90% of the people in the workforce? There is no addressing that. Now, there's a second very important point that I need to make. At the end of the day, if you, and Mr. Das is right, if you want to bring up, you know, sort of boost it up by fiscal uh, stimulus, the fiscal deficit is about 8 to 9%. Yes. I agree that the numbers do not match. They keep saying 3.2, 3.4%, but you've not counted the PSU, so that's 8 to 9%. That will take political will, but will the international communities and international uh, banking sectors allow that? And one last point. Yeah. If you're growing at 6%, which is government keeps tom toying, which you're not, this time the numbers will come out end of the month, right. will definitely be less than 5.6, which was right. last time, right. if you're growing at 6%, then what was the problem? You clearly are not growing at 6% and your fiscal deficit is 8%. That is what Mr. Das is saying. The numbers do not inspire confidence. Okay, one sec, one sec. Nasir Salim, would you like to respond to that? Because, you know, we've got so many numbers indicating the mess that India's economy is in. Uh, the unemployment scenario, sure. crazy statistics like 10 lakh jobs in the auto sector might disappear. The GDP growth rate was 6.2, is 6.2. It's cut to 6.2 from 6.8. Um, uh, by Moody's uh, 2020, it's been cut to 6.7 versus 7.3% earlier, it goes on and on. So, yes. uh, I mean, w are, we, are we right in really praising some of these moves? Because the larger picture seems pretty scary at this stage. See, Vishnu, uh, firstly, thank you for having me on your show. It's uh, great to be back on, you, on your show. See, Vishnu, I think it's very simple and very clear. Uh, between all the negativity that is spread around right now, I think today it was a ray of hope uh, which has come out and I'm very, I'm very happy and uh, I must tell you, I think on all fronts, whether it's on the FBI surcharge uh, being uh, revoked now, uh, will actually give a lot of confidence to the equity markets. I must tell you, being a banker, I'm going to talk about what, what matters to um, my line of interest. 
uh, and I must tell you that will have a real impact on Monday as you see the markets would open up positive. Mm -hmm. It's going to obviously boost a lot of investor confidence as far as equity markets is concerned. Having said that, I think the biggest challenge today, which also uh, the Honorable Finance Minister said and, and you know, very clearly stated that they're going to kind of address this issue, which is of liquidity transmission. You see, you can do enough to create liquidity. Liquidity is not a challenge, but the biggest challenge today, uh, Vishnu, is liquidity transmission. And if that does not get catered to, if we do not ensure the liquidity reaches the end consumer, whether right. it's in the MSME space or the SME space, or uh, while I agree, you know, that they've uh, also linked the, uh, your uh, lending rates to the repo rates, which is again a favorable and a very uh, a promising step taken, yeah. which will obviously ensure cheaper loan rates. But the biggest challenge today is liquidity transmission, Vishnu, and that is something which we need to be very, very careful and very, very watchful of. Number okay. one. My second quick point is, look, as far as the overall sentiment is concerned today, uh, you've had a situation in the auto industry where we've seen, we, we're looking at a receding trend line in auto sales. But here's where they've come up and said, they're going to give actually 30% uh, uh, depreciation benefit, which was against 15%. That will mop up some consumer spending. The challenge in our economy today, Vishnu, is twin, twin challenges. Number one, we have lowest consumption, as somebody on the panel said, and followed by the lowest savings rate. Now, as far as the equity transactions are concerned, they've actually uh, gone ahead and announced another very favorable step, which is basically on short term cap on capital gains on equity transactions, for example. And there they're saying they will remove the surcharge, which at the highest taxation slab today, beyond five crores of income is at 37.5. Yes. Now, that's a big change again, which will again ensure that, you know, investments start to flow back into equity oriented schemes okay. and which will infuse a lot of capital. Unfortunately, uh, we've been delayed in this. I yes. wish this was not done earlier. Yes. They did not announced this in way back on the 5th of July because of which we've seen almost 12,000 odd crores of okay. FBI money okay, flying out of the nation. Sure. But hopefully this will be restored and we will see some investor conference coming back from Monday onwards. All right. I just want to bring in uh, Pooja Mehra and Dr. Brinda Jagirdar, the former chief economist of SBI. Uh, Dr. Jagirdar, let's look at a couple of these points one by one which have been announced. Firstly, Angel tax provisions for startups have been uh, have been removed. They shouldn't have been there in the first place. But the fact is, the government has listened and they've gotten rid of this tax. Uh, what does this mean for 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 people looking uh, to actually get in with bright ideas, uh, which actually may make a big mark in our economy? This actually the first thing the the the, the prime point. Uh, of this whole conference was to restore investor confidence and uh, by removing the surcharge on FPIs and by also re uh, making CSR uh, shortfalls not criminal, uh, mm -hmm. not a criminal violence, not a criminal uh, offense. So and, and then this angel tax for example. Uh, what will happen is that a lot of startups in the economy, a lot of startups which need to, which are really looking to take forward not just their ideas but then bring in growth and uh, jobs in the economy. So this, uh, th this relief that is given to the startups will definitely help. Along with this, the transmission that has been set in motion, uh, one is the interest rate transmission and other is the liquidity transmission. I think these two factors going forward will put in money into the hands of consumers and will help the banks to lend. Once this chain starts and confidence starts to build in, then slowly we will see, see the economy moving towards recovery mode. I, I'm not saying this is all that needs to be done and everything has been done today. A lot more definitely needs to be done and the finance minister has assured that this is only part one of three series that will be, uh, which we will be seeing. Okay. So all these together will help. Now, for example, auto sector, this is a very big sector which really has a big impact on the economy. This sector has received a boost. So this in turn will help to pass on and help to improve consumer sentiment, especially coming just before the festive season. But it's so, come. It's, uh, it's mean, come. Not the end but, but of the Dr. Jagidhar, road. It's, we will see Dr. Both, Jagidhar, uh, it's come at a certain in, cost, but it's very right? Important. It has come at a cost. We want to encourage economic growth by revitalizing the auto sector, but in the process, allowing vehicles which really shouldn't be running because of their emission standards, Bharat Stage Four, to be sold for longer or to run for a longer period of time. There is an environmental toll that, that we are paying in order to push our economy along. You know, we aren't talking about that. Maybe we should. You know, Bharat 4 is not, 
there, there is Bharat, the earlier ones, the uh, older vehicles, they are the we ones are which at, really need to be taken BS off the road. We are now at BS stage 5 looking to get into Bharat stage 6. We are looking at no, no, Bharat stage 6, the, which, which conforms to Euro stage 6 in terms we've of... Skipped, no, we have skipped stage, stage 5, we are yeah, going from, from 4, four to we were 6, looking at we six. have skipped stage and 5, and now we are stuck the at 4. The thing is that the government, she has also announced that we need to have a scrappage yeah. policy. Yeah. We need to have a scrap, we are not stuck at 4, we need to move gradually. And both electric vehicles as well as internal combustion vehicles will need to run for some time parallelly. But also we need to have a scrappage policy which needs to be put in place, we need to have scrappage yards, we need to give, you know, make this uh, first, uh, put this infrastructure in place. I think that is what will uh, help to move forward quickly. A lot of people, Dr. Jagidar, would also say that, look, uh, you know, if you're talking about uh, electric vehicles, uh, we had Nitin Gadkari, in fact, in an interview tell me uh, several months back that by 2030 that would dominate the economy. The, the, the more we are, we are delaying that, for whatever the reasons now may be, a lot of people would say it, it's not going to exist parallelly because there are certain cost factors in electric vehicles which are very different from from other cars, uh, the uh, BS4 cars or even BS6 cars, uh, and therefore only one of the two will exist unless we have a proactive government move. Uh, you know, we are going to be stuck in this rut as far as the environment is concerned or moving away from fuel is concerned. It won't happen. You know, the, the, the uh, environment, the damage to the environment is not just from the petrol vehicles, but it's also from, say, burning stubble, which happens it's in the north. It's also from diesel vehicles, so, uh, it's, and, uh, so which this, is why you uh, needed Euro 6 standards for diesel. Is, you needed yes, Euro 6 diesel standards for diesel. Vehicles. Yeah. Absolutely, we definitely need them, but, but we have to we have to move in, in in a more calibrated manner. It cannot be so disruptive. And let's let's not forget that the transport sec sector itself is going through its own disruptions. People today have uh, you know they have choice of uh, uh, other aggregators, the, cab aggregators, rather than buying their own cars. And so therefore, it's. Uh, yeah, and so, and so therefore, the uh, sector itself is going through okay. its own disruption, and uh, that also needs to be played out. Okay, I want to go across to Pooja, who's been listening to this uh, very, very patiently. Uh, the upfront release of 70,000 crores of funds for government banks and the additional lending of 5 lakh uh, crore rupees to public sector banks, would you say that these are the two biggest uh, stimulus elements of what's been proposed? And, and do you believe that you know, this can turn the tide for us, at least to a certain extent, in a finite period of time? I wouldn't call it a stimulus, uh, Vishnu, but it is a sort of an unclogging of a constrained pipeline. Uh, uh, there was uh, uh, there was a liquidity uh, issue that was uh, resulting in a, a problem in flow of credit in the economy, and this is one step towards resolving that. And uh, most of the points that I wanted to make have already been made by uh, everybody on the panel. Uh, this is, of course, the first round of a uh, set of three uh, rounds of announcements that the finance minister is going to make. And uh, apart from all, all the reversals of the erroneous or the uh, uh, disruptive decisions that had been announced in the budget, uh, which did not go down well and sort of uh, spoiled the market sentiment, uh, apart from reversal of those, I think uh, the signal and the message that uh, comes is that Finally, there is an acceptance in government uh, that something needs to be done. Uh, the economy is not going through, uh, uh, you know, uh, the whole euphoria earlier and we are the champions mode earlier, which uh, often came in the way of accepting that there was a slowdown. Yep. Uh, I think that phase has ended and I think from, on, from today's events, that biggest get, uh, uh, Take takeaway away. is... Yep. The positive uh, sort of, you know, uh, manner in which the government has um, uh, decided to take up this challenge of the economic slowdown. Mr. Sabdur, you had a point. Go ahead. No, actually, I have just two quick points on this issue of banks. See, the 70,000 crores is not a new infusion. It was already there in the budget. They're just saying they're going to do it at one point of time and it's not going to be staggered. The second part is today, I don't think it's a problem of uh, liquidity, of course, is an issue, but I think there's ample liquidity in the system. It's the willingness to lend, which is low. Yes. Credit risk perception is very high. So even if you're going to give uh, funds to the banks, they prefer retail lending. They're not going to lend to corporates. I think that's something which we have forgotten. Yeah, this can I? Yeah, go ahead. I just so to, want to, to add. 
Yeah, yeah one sec, Pooja, go ahead and then Tessie. Yeah, yeah Pooja, please, go please, ahead Pooja. with your point. Yeah, uh, uh, I, I just wanted to add that, you know, uh, we keep getting these numbers from the RBI saying that there is no liquidity problem. But when I go and speak to small SMEs, uh, you know, uh, uh, companies with two crore turnover per month, three crore turnover per month, they say that all of this liquidity that the RBI talks about and the banks talk, talk about is not reaching us. Mm -hmm. So clearly there is some sort of a clogging somewhere where uh, despite the system showing liquidity numbers, uh, people who need credit need right now system. and people with assets to uh, back up their uh, uh, borrowing right. with, uh, they are not able to borrow. And uh, that, I think, is the main problem that needs to be resolved right okay. now. Okay. Yeah. Tessie? So I agree with Pooja. People are not being able to borrow. There's a lending problem, but there's a larger problem. Look, uh, real estate is completely, completely destroyed. Now, real estate is what keeps your economy actually going in a country like India. That's part one. What I was expecting from this press conference, and this was a personal expectation because as an entrepreneur, I'm in the service industry. GST, there has not been the reduction of GST rates. I know that they say that they'll keep coming back to that. That is creating a major clogging. I know, again, she said 30 days, there'll be release of money. But the other problem is that, you know, uh, one is uh, simply Simplification for GST in service industry and I can go on a number of examples with the service industry even today. I'm not talking about manufacturing but the service industry, the goods industry, I'm talking about service industry is so clogged with GST. There's so much of confusion. And number two, you know when the government starts acting socialist, for example when Mr. Paswan says five star tens, that's, an, that's a business I'm in, we will monitor prices. It destroys our confidence. We put in money to build hotels. Now when the government comes up with policies that are flip-flop that says what your menu should be priced, how the taxes are. No, but where does that happen in, in, in these suggestions today? Well, where is the reference? Well, the reference is not there. That's my problem that they should, it, that, that will boost investor confidence. Suddenly there's a minister who says, look, okay, a five-star. So you're talking about a certain set of proposals in the one service area. Maybe, industry, maybe you the should, service you industry should, today sure, is, you, you is under a lot that. of... You need to Why didn't you give that in writing? Well, we've given that in writing to the... And I'll just give a very small example. You know, a gym right next to, to a gym that I'm involved with sells yoga membership. Now, yoga, GST, zero and he gives gym free. I cannot do that in my system. 18% is gym membership. How do you compete at the same 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 uh, rentals at the same uh, okay. on the same location? They have confused the policy. GST was meant to be simple. Four taxes plus a zero percent slab plus a cow cess and government interference. Hearings 200 kilometers apart. It's it's just a disaster. But Rajat, not simplifying it. Rajat, as far as GST is concerned, a lot of people would say that she's made some very good suggestions today. For example, all pending GST refunds in 30 days for MSMEs and all future GST refunds in 60 days for MSMEs. One year back, we were shouting ourselves hoarse about how the GST system didn't work because the refund business process was all wrong. It was not moving. Uh, so Rajat, would you not say that if the government can uh, and the IT department or the various departments can actually stick to 30 days for older ones and 60 days going forward, then you know millions would be impacted in a very finite period of time. No, I, I fully agree and uh, just the matter of refund in itself was discussed right from the days of Gujarat election onwards. So uh, it's just that the, the GST regime in general and I would want to object here to what Tehsinji has been saying, I don't know which Lala land he is coming from, but it's a federal tax regime. We need to keep in mind that it's not just the central government from the drop of the hat they can change the rates. I remember that there are states, small and big, who have very idiosyncratic views on certain GST rates and they really want to latch on to it. Uh, therefore, this, this broad federal consensus that has, uh, that has brought in the GST regime structures should be respected. And press conferences is certainly not the place where GST rate-based discussions or, or, or the larger discussions around GST should be done. Whatever the central government could do, as you have rightly pointed out, Vishnu, I uh, myself uh, have been part of certain deliberations in which I believe refund was the central issue that, that was the pain point for most of these MSME sector uh, industrialists and like uh, smaller um, uh, industry groups. They have all been repeatedly saying that this is the core issue. I think now uh, they have just come out with a blanket policy that whatever has happened in the past two years, this is a fresh start. We will okay. finish off all the refunds in 30 days and going forward that window of 60 days will be there. See, it's, it's not an easy process again. Okay, one second. I just want to, I want to, that have been put Tessie, in one place. second. I want to go across to my other panelists yeah, who will be waiting. One thing, yes. Gucharan Das, you've been uh, waiting for a while on this particular point of GST refunds. Go ahead, sir. No, I was really going to give this as an example 
of the the details that they have gone into. Mm -hmm. What I was going to say, what is refreshing about today's press conference, is that there was an there was a you could tell that they had been listening, and for a government that's not known for being a good listener, I thought this was wonderful, and it was a conciliatory, it was an empathetic finance minister, unlike the day after the budget when she just dismissed a lot of things in, 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 an, in a cavalier way. So I must say, let's give credit where it's due. And secondly, what struck me is precisely what we've been talking about, whether it's the refunds on GST, but the devil is always in the details. Yes. For example, the, 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 the idea that 75% of the award, an arbitration award, should be immediately paid. Now that is a, a, a it looks to be a small matter, but it's very important for for the nation's credibility in India's competitiveness and credibility. Similarly, you could see that the reason why banks are not lending is because it's a question of of the CVC, yes. that the, no banker is willing to take a risk anymore. And she took a lot of trouble to explain how they have, uh, they're going to provide new, new guidelines to bank managers, yep. so they are insulated. And the risk of lending is, is, is incorporated in the CVC guidelines. Okay. So I think what I was impressed by today's press conference was that listening ability and that's what gives me hope that the next two press conferences they will address some of the the, the, the points specifics. related to what i had raised the big area of infrastructure etc and the, how where the money well, will one come sec, from. Yeah, Tessin, one sec i'll come to this in a bit but uh, ashok desai you've been waiting for a while uh, would you agree with with, with, with gochar and das on the, on this point that this was a government uh, which which a has been listening b announced did the finance minister today that there have been several uh, several meetings for example when it came to encouraging enterprise and investment uh, where she sat uh, with with uh, with uh, with leaders uh, of, of of businesses uh, took down their their, their 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 concerns various sectors meetings which went on for several hours and that the effort over here was to announce how they are addressing all of these you know, there is, uh, the, for all the arguments of, of, uh, of, of an aggressive government, an arrogant government, a government that doesn't listen, uh, is this not something which is important, the, the perception of listening? Is, that, is this not something which actually Nirmala Sitaraman has, has, a, has a touch for this? She's done this in the past as well. Uh, you know, and in, in keeping true to, to, to what she has done in the past, would you not welcome this move? Well, I greatly welcome it because uh, she'd made, let's say, two dozen mistakes okay. in her budget, and now she has corrected half a dozen of them. She needs to say, correct another couple of dozen mistakes, and this will go on and on. But she did not have made those mistakes at all. If she had listened to people before making the budget, she wouldn't have made these mistakes. Pooja, you're, you're, you're smiling. You, you, would you agree with that, that this is a, a rollback series of announcements to correct mistakes which have been made? It is a rollback. Uh, most of the announcements she has made uh, you know, uh, are, are, are rollbacks of announcements that were made in the budget. Uh, some of the announcements that she has made are a response to what, what can be called a sort of first aid. Uh, but it's the beginning that she has made and there's a long way she has to go uh, if she wants to address the economic slowdown that we are facing and um, uh, you know uh, i could say uh, uh, that it's a it's a beginning she has made and we'd like to encourage her to keep making uh, you know the correct decisions now keep listening to what people like dr desai is saying uh, call call more and more economists for uh, consultations, understand what is causing the slowdown. I think until very recently, the finance ministry had no clarity on what was causing the slowdown. And there was this whole debate among 
uh, government economists where half of them were saying it's a cyclical slowdown, the other half was saying, no, these are structural problems. Somebody was saying we are getting into a middle income trap. Another set was saying we are the fastest growing economy in the world. And uh, uh, I think there was absolutely no clarity in government on what was happening. Um, I hope that all of that has been put uh, behind mm -hmm. and I hope there will be a more consultative approach from here on. Uh, Rajaji, I wish I came from La La Land. Unfortunately, I'm an entrepreneur and I'm living a nightmare which your government has created. And here are the facts, Rajaji. You keep in your arrogance, you refuse to believe for the longest time that the economy was slowing down. Your government officials and your spokespersons came on TV and said we are the fastest growing economy, which was not true. And the fact of the matter is you do not give us authentic numbers. We don't have the numbers. Even today, nobody can authentically say at what rate are we growing, what's our fiscal deficit, because you do jugad with numbers. And to my last point, Rajaji, a simple political uh, answer to you is out of the 29 uh, states, 24 are controlled by you. So get your act together in GST and stop the arrogance. Okay, Rajat, Rajat, you want to respond to that before we come back to a, a, a more think, analytical uh, discussion? I will not yes. enter into any level of low level of political bickering. Uh, you started it, my friend. I did. But I was making structural see, one, points. Let one, him respond and then we move point. on. Yes. You, you keep your speak. arrogance of low level. Don't use terms like that with me. I don't like it. I've given you respect. If okay, you all right. Terms, Tezin, it all right. Okay, that's fine. Rajat, respond yeah. to that and we'll move yeah. on. Yeah. If I had to come at you, sir, I jump from your over. ego let to your IQ. I don't want over. to do that. Come on, let's not get personal. Yeah. So, let's so, let's keep it, so keep it civil. Rajat, We're Rajat, Rajat do you want to respond to that or should yeah. I move on? Swachh Bharat well, should begin from the mind and mouth. And this is where the government. Oh, come on. Can I speak now, please? Go ahead, go ahead, yes. I just, I don't want any political bickering on this topic. Yeah, so don't get So, uh, Vishnu, my, my simple point was that GST was something, and she also pointed it out, that it's a federal tax structure which she unilaterally cannot comment on. And I think she was within her federal limits. And I think one cannot have disagreement on this, number one. Number two, um, what Mr. Rajiv Kumar yesterday had pointed out was the credit mess that was uh, being created by UPA2. And every independent um, analyst would agree to a disproportionate amount of credit infusion, which created the whole problem. And this is where even reports like yesterday, McKinsey came out with a report where they looked into balance sheets of 23,000 companies, specifically Asian, uh, from the Asian economies. And one thing they all pointed out that are 40, around 40% 40 of firms, both in China and India, are finding it very hard to service their debt. Now, this is uh, what is symptomatic of, of the problems that will unfold in the future as well. Now, you need to understand that most of uh, the credit uh, that was uh, infused into, into the economy and disproportionately without proper checks and balances, which is now termed as the debt crisis of Asia, uh, has been uh, done during 2009 to 2014, and this is what was pointed out yesterday as well by the Vice Chairman of uh, the Niti Aayog. Where do, where do we head uh, among the, the larger concerns that are there because of the rising trade war? Today, as we speak, $75 billion of extra tariffs have been placed by China on the U.S., and now U.S., and Trump tweeted recently, uh, uh, and he said that uh, we are going to hit back even more severely. When you see such trade wars being, uh, you know, being fought right in front of, uh, uh, in front of us, and when the economies like those of India are trying to recover, get their acts together, okay. it becomes really hard. Okay, Rajat, just one moment. There's a tweet setting. which is Isn't coming from Amit Shah, and just uh, the last little while, he says India's economy remains resilient, and despite global slowdown, uh, uh, despite a global slowdown, it's performing well. Our government has been. Uh, fiscally prudent while prioritizing growth. Today's announcements by Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman only reinforce the fact that Modi 2.0 is committed to making India a $5 trillion economy. Well, that, uh, that's uh, a commitment, but a lot of people would say that that's uh, a, a rhetoric to a very, very large extent. Nasser Salim, would you agree that you know this $5 trillion mark, uh, it's unrealistic, it's just a vision, it's a hope, to actually get there is going to take a lot more doing than the, the type of announcements we've, we've seen so far. You see, Vishnu, I completely agree. I think the five trillion mark now remains a distant dream, and I must say that because uh, a lot needs to be done right now. I think we've just taken the first baby steps of course correction, as we saw today. Uh, I think also you have to understand that between this five trillion dollar mark, there is a lot of global pressures which is continuing to build, Vishnu. 
uh, as somebody in the panel right now just said, you know, just today, uh, fresh tariffs have been added by China, and uh, uh, you know, and 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 by and by the U.S. as well. So you know, this this uh, trade pressures will continue and actually bring in a lot of pressure domestically as well as far as India is concerned. But I think you know, uh, baby steps is what is required at the moment. We need to fix the biggest challenge. I tell you, which I fear, and I continue to say this repeatedly, Vishnu is. You know, the finance minister has come up and said this transmission of rates should happen, but how willing are the banks? Because the shadow banking system today has collapsed. As we know, NBFCs have collapsed. They're not at all giving any lines of credit. There is a huge amount of credit squeeze there. And I think the banks need to address that and actually address the gap, which is very, very important. And as long as that doesn't change, we will not see that $5 trillion mark. I'm afraid uh, that has to be pushed further away. Uh, but my second point is, you know, a very simple, Vishnu, as far as, uh, again, uh, you know, the banking system is concerned, there, there also need to be told. Today, a lot of bankers are also sitting on the edge and trying to understand should they actually dole out loans because, yes. you know, today they, they made an announcement uh, basically saying that we will not paint the same brush uh, with, with all people who are in wealth creators or wealth generators. But bankers today are also very afraid. They're actually afraid of undersigning papers which will push a document through even if it's valid, even if yep. it's got the right credit uh, worthiness of being given a sure. loan to. So therefore, I think even bankers today need to be told that, look, as long as you do your due diligence correctly, if you do your, if, if, if you do your, you know, your balance sheet analysis correctly, and if it's not window dressed, please go ahead and give the money to the right genuine uh, wealth creators and investors and consumers. All right, I'm going to wrap this up. Uh, before I do that, uh, you know, Nirmala Sitaraman actually ended her press conference today very much along the lines of how she started it. And in her closing remarks, she said, in an age when trade tensions are increasing, global trade is down, the threats of currency wars are being made, our growth continues to be the envy of many. We are alive to challenges and will continue to respond to them in, on a real-time basis, not in a knee-jerk manner, but in a well-thought a true and carefully nuanced manner. So once again, referring to the macro environment of currency wars, the global trade being down, uh, trade tensions as well. Gurcharan Das, last comments from you before I end this. Go ahead, sir. Well, you know, I go back to what Ashok Desai said, that it's India. Sure, you may say we are the fastest growing economy, but the reality is India's potential is 8% at least. And we have to grow at 8% because of our youthful population. This youthful population can be a real asset only if they get jobs. And to do that, you have to be above 8. So we were at 8.2 four uh, quarters ago. We are now down to 5.8. We don't know what's coming next. So I do think that we should not take comfort from the fact that we are the fastest growing. We really should be measuring ourselves against our potential and the fact that we really must grow much higher than we are today. All right. I think, I think everybody would agree on that. We need to grow much faster and higher than where we are today. I'd like to thank uh, all of our panelists uh, very much uh, for joining us. A series of steps announced by the finance minister, Nirmala Sitaraman. How far will this go in actually taking us closer to our dreams? We don't know that so far. But I think there is a consensus that this is an effort at listening to criticism, listening to suggestions and trying to implement a lot of them. And I think there's a lot of hope uh, attached to the next set of announcements as well. But as far as the auto sector for starters is concerned, they welcome this move in a very, very big way. Remember the auto sector facing fairly unprecedented, uh, a fairly unprecedented slowdown and unemployment in the lax. We're going to take a short break. More coming up on NDTV 24 7.